Hey guys, my name is Vivian from the Paper Letter blog, also known as the Chatty Pen Pug channel. And today we're going to make a project that is similar to this one. Now it may look very simple, very plain, but that is because this is just a prototype <laughs> and it's also kind of wobbly, wonky lines. But we are going to make something similar to this, just a little bit sturdier and with a different aesthetic. And then of course we're going to fill it with goodies and I'm also going to decorate these little pages. Now I just wanted to come on here really really quick and say that I have used a sewing machine. I'm hoping that in the tutorial I'm going to do these lines will be a little bit straighter. <laughs> Not as wonky as this but I mean it kind of adds to the aesthetic I guess. But I wanted to make it very clear that you do not need a sewing machine for this tutorial. I'm simply sewing the edges but you could use glue, you could use washi tape, you could use what else is there? Um, I just used sewing because I thought that would kind of look nice. So I wanted to come on here really. So I'm going to make this little project with you guys. I'm of course going to make it look nicer. Uh, it will have two pockets and plenty of decoration. Let's go. Okay, so first I'm showing you what you're going to need for this project. Uh, some paper, I'm using cardstock as a base and then single-sided paper for the panels. You need something to measure and you need something to cut. So you could use a scissor and ruler or you could use, uh, like I'm doing, a score and trim. If this goes too fast for you, don't worry. I will have all of the measurements in the description box down below. Also feel free to adapt this to any size you like. I just made this size because it felt right. But if you wanna make it bigger or smaller, or if you want to make more panels, you know, feel free to go crazy and do whatever you like with this. It's just, I really like making videos to give you an idea and you don't have to follow them to a T. I also don't necessarily think I am the best at doing tutorials, but I do like planting those ideas with you and then in the end seeing what you make with them. So if you end up making this project, I would be super duper grateful if you would use the hashtag the paper letter blog or even tag me at the paper letter blog on Instagram because I love seeing what you guys make with these. Now, in case you do wanna follow along, I will tell you the measurements. Again, they're also mentioned in the description down below. I start with a 12 inch paper, uh, 12 by five and a half inches. Uh, wide again feel free to adapt this any way you like and then you are going to score this paper um, vertically basically at four one eighth of an inch and at eight three eighth of an inch again feel free to adapt that if you like that makes three flaps so that the next thing we are going to do now is we're going to create the paper that will um, cover up those individual window <laughs> flaps that will make three flaps one of them will be four one eighth of an inch the next one will be four one fourth of an inch and the third one will be three by five of three five eighths of an inch and the reason why they're all different they could be all three of them the same but it gets really difficult to fold uh, pieces of paper when they're all the same size so that's why they're all slightly different and I also wanted the top flap to be slightly shorter so that you get a little bit of a wallet idea instead of yeah <laughs> I don't know how else to pronounce to say this but I mean you will see what I mean when we are finishing this paper cover thing. I'm trying something, not necessarily new, but I'm trying something. I am trying not to redo my voiceovers too often because the other day I uploaded an extra video to Patreon. If you're my patron, especially in the member tier, you get extra videos every now and then. In case you're interested in that, all of the links are mentioned down below. And I made an extra video and I told myself that I was not allowed to redo my voiceover. So I had to leave everything in. Of course, if I would have accidentally made a super loud sound, then I would have cut that out. But the doorbell rang, I misspoke, I did a lot of things wrong and I left all of that in there. And then I got the feedback that it was actually really nice. It's like Vivian uncut. So I'm trying to do that now as well. Of course, mistakes and stuff will be cut out. 
but I'm trying not to overdo it. So we have created the cardstock base and then we've created the extra panels that go on the individual flaps. And then the last thing I'm doing before actually sewing these panels down is I used a circle punch to take one bite out of two of the papers because the top and bottom uh, flap are actually going to be pockets. Again, I could explain all of that, but it's easier to just show you once I'm done uh, sewing them. So what you do for these uh, individual squares is you, if you want to do the same as me, of course, you're going to sew or stick or glue them uh, together at three of the sides, leaving one side open to become a pocket. And then I do something different for this one as well. I'm going to create a shaker in the middle. Um, I found some pretty vellum paper and I decided to use that for the middle flap. So I turned that into a shaker with some pretty pink sequin. The only problem was, or is, because I still haven't sent this project out, that the vellum did not stay in one place when I was sewing, because I'm still learning. So as you can see, if you look closely, it's all uh, puffy on one side, like it did not turn into a straight page. I sort of, I think I moved the paper or did something wrong, so it was really messy. I panicked. I really panicked. I thought I had to restart this video. I had to restart my whole project, make a new one because the, the shaker didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. And I was ready to give it all up. But then I thought, okay, I made this mistake. Mistakes happen. I make mistakes all the time. I'm just going to take a deep breath, see if I can fix it. Like if I cannot fix it, then I can still cut the top and the bottom page off and then I'll have two really cute <laughs> pink pockets <laughs> all done. Um, if I if I really mess it up then I'll still be able to use the top and the bottom flap but I'm just gonna give it a shot and see if I can do something about it and in the end I did. I fixed it, I just covered up the bulky part, the part that did not lay down flat with a bunch of sequins, some flowers, some butterflies. And in the end, yes, you can still see that I messed up, but it looks nice. And I still think that uh, it's it turned into a pretty element, not necessarily a failure. So that's a lesson I'm taking away from this. <laughs> like, oh, I, I could feel my, it sounds so dramatic, like I could feel my heart sink, but when you've been, when you put so much effort into a project and then you mess something up as big as this, then yeah, you're going to be like, oh damn. <laughs> but I think this is a good lesson for me as well, not to immediately uh, give up. I don't normally give up, but I, I lose faith. <laughs> that sounds so dramatic. It's just a page, but like I said, uh, when especially when I'm making a video, I just put a lot of pressure on myself. Like I want it to be presentable and nice and yeah. So. But in the end, I think this is a good lesson for me as well. So what I'm using is I use a, a ticket, pink, light pink ticket. This turned out to be quite pink. I did not originally set out to make a pink project, but I just kept finding pink things to add to this and I loved all of the, the pink sequins and stuff like that. So, I, you know, it turned out to be very peachy pink. <laughs> um, so I take it and then I have some uh, like ticket dye. I just die cut some pretty pink paper into more tickets. And then a while back, I made these layered flower dyes, die cuts uh, that I'm also using. And I have some, these are all like things I die cut with my big shot machine. I will also link that down below. I often get questions what machine I use and I simply use a big shot. I think that's the most common machine in the crafting industry. It's not automatic. You have to roll it with your hand and it works quite well. So all of these little pink butterflies, I found quite a bit of pink things to add. I already said that, not redoing this voiceover. You got this. Oh, okay, while we have some time, I'm decorating. I hope this tutorial made sense. Again, I will put all of the measurements in the description box down below, but I don't think it's that difficult, right? The only thing I uh, didn't mention yet is that I obviously sewed all of the three pages 
uh, or two of the three pages on three sides and then one of them on four sides so that it makes a pocket. And the reason why that's important is because if you do one long piece of paper then you could also skip some of the stitch lines. I don't know if that makes sense. I could try and explain that, but I don't think I really have to. If you just look at what I've done here, you can see I still did wobbly lines, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't really mind it that much. Like if I were a professional or if I would sell this for money, then yeah, I, I might want to try and get better. I'm still learning. I definitely am. Sewing is not my strength, but I, I enjoy testing it out. But I, I think it kind of adds to the touch, right? I mean, if it really looked like a toddler made it, then I would be in trouble. But I think it looks kind of cute if it's not perfectly neat. And <laughs> as you can see, the, um, the shaker page turned out, if I may say so myself, quite nice. <laughs> the next thing that I'm doing, that is something I love so much. This is a, a tool that I purchased a couple months ago and I love it so much. I didn't regret it for a second. I mentioned this in every video. This is not sponsored. I just honestly am a fan. It's a cropodile. So basically what that does is it punches a hole into your project and then you can reinforce that hole with a little eyelet. So I did that. I just basically folded a strip of paper in half and I added an eyelet to that because that is going to be our closure. I only for a second there I wasn't sure if I should put the pretty side of the eyelet on the front or on the back of the project because when you close the flip book you will see the back side of the eyelet but I thought the receiver can possibly if he or she likes this probably a she because it's super duper pink <laughs> hang this up and then it would be nice if the eyelet was on the front I hope that makes sense but I thought it could be kind of fun to hang this up in your craft room have like a a little happy mail on display. Next thing I did, it's going quite fast, but this I filmed on this project. I worked for quite some time, so I have a lot of footage, which is why it's super duper sped up because otherwise this would be a half hour long video and some people like these, but not everyone. <laughs> so I have to speed it up quite fast, but I chose a la papier, a writing paper that had a little desk and some light pink touches not super duper pink because everything is already quite pink so i just chose a somewhat neutral page and it fit into the pocket as if it was made for the pocket so that's good and then i have some um i would say tissue paper tissue like paper that was actually in a shoe box <laughs> recycle everything you guys and i stamped a pretty label to that i think it looks really nice actually i should do that more often it's see-through enough so that you can use it to cover something up but it also stands out from the background quite a bit and then i had a kind of crochet that crochet image came from a magazine that was sent to me by a faith she cut out some images for me and because this crochet image is quite pink <laughs> i thought it would look quite nice in the little box that's a funny story actually that box is not a box of die cuts it used to be this is amazing brace yourselves brownies through the mailbox because uh, back in october november i heard that i would be temporarily losing my job due to this lockdown period and well needless to say i was sad i mean it's no one's fault it's not my fault it's not my boss's fault it's just this lockdown so i temporarily lost my job but it's still even though it's no one's fault it still made me very sad i haven't really talked about that here on youtube because I wasn't ready for that and being unemployed there's a bit of a stigma around that you know and I kind of sometimes feel like a failure even though like I said no one saw this coming but I was not too happy and then my mom she sent me a bouquet of flowers because that always cheers me right up and then my boyfriend actually had a batch of brownies <laughs> delivered so that little box um, had peanut butter I kid you not peanut butter brownies in it and I of course had to keep the box because it's perfectly small and it fits through a mailbox <laughs> so I just put um, a collection of die cuts in there these die cuts I think they are from Rosie's studio they're absolutely gorgeous and I want to use them I already tested to see if the die cuts would sort of match this paper and yeah they fit kind of perfectly 
Oh, before I forget the paper, I'm, I'm talking so much today, I'm sorry. <laughs> but there's so much going on, I feel like I have to mention everything. Um, the papers I used for this are from Action, which is a Dutch dollar store. It's a simple paper pad. And then the cardstock I'm using is f like the Croft paper cardstock is from Croftelier. And then, like I said, I'm pretty sure the die cuts are from Rosie's studio. But maybe someone can confirm. I'm not entirely sure. I just took them out of the packaging and forgot. And I have some lovely gold foiling on them, which I really like. I'm also, for 2021, I have not set any uh, goals or things for myself. Like, you know, normally people would say lose weight, exercise more. Haven't done any of that because simply going through this time and surviving this pandemic should be a goal enough. But I have set some goals for myself for crafting. And one of them is to be less wasteful. So everything from sequins to plastic bags that I already own, I will use because not using them is also wasteful, but I'm not going to purchase any new. And the second thing is to learn, which is also very important for me to learn how to do a minimalistic uh, decorating. <laughs> That's so you can see that on the top and the bottom flap. I tried to work with minimalistic, um, just a couple of die cuts don't fill up the whole page and I like it but still I felt like I had to do some mini doodles so whenever you see me doodle I still cannot say that doodle with a um, black marker it's because <laughs> I don't want to pay fill the page up too much but I do feel that I need something extra and I again made a little eyelet on the washi tape sample. Ever since I got it, I've been adding eyelets to everything and anything, and I like it so much. I think it looks really nice. And then I'm going to wrap up this project with some twine. However, we're not finished yet. I'm just adding the twine. I don't know, because I was excited about it, but I am still going to decorate the outside a little bit as well. So this is what I meant. When you close the flip book, you will see the back side of that eyelet. It's not necessarily ugly, but the other side is obviously prettier. And bam, did you see that come together? I grabbed two die cuts. I liked the way it looked and I decided to go for it. That's new for me as well. <laughs> I'm still moving it around 60,000 times because uh, I worry that it's not good enough, but it, this is what I end up going with. And then another thing I'm doing is I'm just using a paper scrap, using paper scraps, plural, to uh, cut into some little flags. And I'm also using those for decorating. Yep, I'm making it look a little bit like there are some sort of washi tape strips. Whew, I've spoken so much. This, that moment where I realized that I've talked a lot would normally be the moment where I would delete my entire voiceover and do it all again because uh, the one thing that I get the most feedback on now like negative feedback now that my um, tri now that I fixed my tripod angle <laughs> because uh, before I would get a lot of comments from people saying your camera angle makes me sick <laughs> but now that I've fixed that the, mo the most often the negative feedback I get is that I talk too much and I know I know that so many of you are now going over straight to the comment section to type Vivian we love it when you talk and I know there's people who like that kind of thing and I am the type of person who likes that kind of thing but there's also people who feel the need to let me know that they don't like it <laughs> so that's I that's just like even though I know a lot of you like it that's still can give insecurity and that's okay it's a learning process but that I, like it's good for me to acknowledge that that like those two in 200 people like one in a hundred people persons how do you say this in english um will give neg negative feedback and that would be enough for me to start all over again which is kind of ridiculous because even if i did start this voice over over voice over over voice over again um, I wouldn't be able to please everyone and that's okay. I normally don't care about it too much, but in my subconscious It's still there <laughs> and that's not a pity party. I'm not saying that to get your sympathy or anything like that No, that's just you know some rambling some sharing some inside information to youtubers live <laughs> 
Okay, so what we did, that pen that I'm using there is my number one pen, jelly roll pen, um, recommendation. I lost the word there for a second. There's two crafting pens that I would recommend. The jelly roll that I just used, which is a white jelly roll from Sakura. I don't know any more information about it. I will try and find it and link it down below. Jelly roll from Sakura and the other pen I used for this project, which is a pen from... Boy, I forgot again. <laughs> oh, Vivian. Um, no do-overs. Let me quickly open up my, um, my cheat sheet. What is this pen called again? Why can I not find it? Okay, there, we should have it here. Oh yeah, Pin Posca calibrated uni pens. The pen is called a uni pen. These are the two pens I love using and I would definitely recommend them. Again, I will try and find it and link it down below. And the reason why I'm sharing that, you might be like, Vivian, I don't care about pens. I never cared about pens until I found these, okay? They're super duper smooth. And the reason why I'm sharing this information is because I am not, like I don't have that natural gift for hand lettering or making little doodles or drawings and these pens, make me feel more professional so if i can give anyone that tip to also feel more comfortable with uh using hand written hand drawn things in projects then i'm happy that came out super duper weird but i hope you know what i mean what i'm doing now is i have in my stash someone sent me a vellum bag whoever more people do that i love these they're my favorite paper my pa ah! Oh my God, it's so sad, I cannot cut that out. They are my favorite bags to reuse, pretty vellum bags. And I'm just filling that with random things, die cuts, um, tick kits. I have some labels, I don't remember what I put in there, but basically just a happy pack with all of these things I like, these doilies that I die cut myself. And then that is going in the bottom layer, some flags, some tags, and you know, some stamps. I put in some stamps and then of course, um, I found a, a vellum bag that fits the bottom pocket perfectly. That, those kind of things, it's super duper silly, but those kind of things just make me happy when you find that, that one pocket that fits or when you find that your letter paper is the exact size you need <laughs> for a project. Um, that just, uh, you know, the little happy moments of a crafter. Then speaking of minimalistic, I tried to do a minimalistic I shouldn't say the word minimalistic so often. I tried to do a tiny collage here uh, with a my cat noose. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but my cat noose in the background is just uh, wiping her feet. She's the only cat. I know a lot of cats, but noose is the only cat who I know wipes her feet. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, a long time ago, I when I don't feel creative, I will do little random things like make envelopes or die cut a lot of things. So a while back, I die cut all of these tags that you see in this basket when I wasn't feeling creative. And I'm still grateful for myself for doing that because I can just grab it and go. So I grabbed a little die cut tag and then I decorated that with some more die cuts and some washi tape. And I think it turned out pretty okay, even though it's like minimal as can be. So that is the end of my video. I am super proud of this project. So I really hope that you will like it as well. Recently, I've gotten more into uh, sharing on and pinning in general on Pinterest. So if you do have Pinterest, I would be super duper grateful if you would follow me. I will link it. I will put it in the comments and it would also be kind of cool if you could pin this video and I will talk to you again very soon. Oh, that was a lot. I hope you guys are doing okay. Don't forget to breathe and drink some tea. And I'll talk to you when I can. <laughs> Bye.